Did you know that stock investing is actually more than 400 years old? And the earliest investing book dates back to 1688. I'm Ali and this is going to be my documentary on stock investing. Okay, so let's record this very quick because it's getting really cold out here. Okay, so basically the reason why I picked stock investing is that I feel like it's one of the most useful modern tools to make profit off of and the easiest ones uh, and the easiest one. But it's not really a modern tool. It's been around for a while for quite some time now. And the first time I've ever heard of it is when the when the cryptocurrency Bitcoin exploded in value in 2017. That's where most of people I know heard of stock investing. It's not really stock investing. Cryptocurrency is, a, is not really stock investing. It's different in some type of way, but they both have the same concept. When the, when the cryptocurrency or the stock goes up in value, you're gonna make profit. When it goes down in value, you're gonna lose profit. And the reason why it's, I feel like it's a really safe route to take is that the companies are also working on making the, uh, pro, uh, the stock value go up because that would be good for their company and they're gonna make profit off of that. So, what is stock investing? Investing means buying a public company's shares of ownership. Those shares are more, uh, more known as stocks. And investing in it, you're hoping for the company to grow and for the stocks to perform well to make you profit. Basically, stocks mean that you own a part of a company, but you are not held responsible for any debts or any problems that occur to the company. Who owns the most shares in a company? Usually, the founders of the company own the most shares and you can't overthrow them because they list limited uh, shares online for you to buy. Huh. Sorry for the bad lights, but uh... I couldn't find the cable to my uh, light and I had to show this real quick uh, so by now I have made uh, from the hundred dollars I put into stocks I have made over uh, $230 profit and when you go to the uh, to the trades open trades here are the stocks that are gaining uh, they're gaining me profit uh the highest one by now is tesla uh it's uh, it's 300 it's making me 300 dollars the and these are the other stocks the silver is uh losing its value and uh, the wheat is uh, also making me profit and tesla is making me the highest profit and apple is making me like a really low profit so now I got, I gotta, I'm gonna close all the, uh, all the trades I have open. Okay. I have closed this. So without the silver, I would be making $374 uh, profit. And yeah, that would be the end of my journey over here in stock investing. I would definitely come back to it and do it sometime. Uh, in the future yes so I'm recording this to kind of analyze and get in detail about the stocks that I picked first I picked Tesla Motors and Apple which are two trendy stocks but as you see in the timeline they're kind of going down in value over the time both of them and I picked two not as known stocks as uh, as Apple and Tesla and they're bought less or like not bought less one of them is kind of going down in value constantly like uh and one is like usually going uh, up in value
basically. So as you see, Tesla Motors is constantly going down in value, okay? It's constantly going down in value. But there are times like this, for example, let me delete this. There are times like this where, where they're going up. So I bought Tesla stocks over here, about here, when it was kind of going down. That's kind of the best time to buy a stock when they're kind of like going down in value to make the, uh, the most profit off of it when it goes up. Okay, so on the second one I'll go for is uh, Apple. Apple is going down usually and sometimes it's going up a lot. If you, it's the same, it goes the same for Tesla and Apple. Uh, they both are the same. You buy them when they're at low, low cost, for low cost, and when they go up, you're gonna make the most profit out of it. I go to silver though, and silver is not really as trendy because the use of silver and all uh, have gotten much lower over the time and not as many people want to buy silver uh, as like let's say gold or like other materials and wheat wheat is usually going up in value as you see right here as you see right here it's constantly going up in value it's going down in the beginning but then it started going really up in value and i bought it kind of uh, about here and it kind of went up a bit it didn't go up as much but as the end result uh, wheat would probably keep going up uh, on like uh, as stock value it's probably gonna keep going up since it's or since it's usually doing this uh, that thing it's going it's usually going up other than the others which there is a chance that they might keep going down or they might go up so why do stocks uh, go up and down in value and why are why is buying uh, trendy stocks in my opinion like Tesla and Apple why is it the best uh, thing to do because Tesla and Apple are trendy because uh, because there is high demand on them Wait a second. There is high demand. Stock prices change every day due to uh, the demand on the on like a, a stock. That's why stocks such as Apple and Tesla would make you a lot of profit because there is high demand on them and they're trending. afternoon uh, mr uh, uh, lynch miss richards and arian uh hope you all doing uh hope you all doing well so this interview will go like one by one i would start with uh, mr lynch then i'll go to like uh, miss richards and then arian uh y'all can uh feel free to like uh leave the meeting after after we i finish interviewing you mm -hmm. okay 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 cool uh so first thing i would uh, start with uh mr lynch uh how and why did you get into stock investing right so originally my first company that i worked for had a retirement plan um prior to that i really didn't know much about anything as far as investing so my first uh, ability to invest was through a retirement plan with my employer. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, is uh, stock investing your full-time uh, job? I actually work more in the financial planning area of which uh, providing investment guidance is a large part of that job. Uh, my firm does not provide specific rock uh, specific stock recommendations but rather um, on a on a 
fund basis as opposed to individual companies. But it's part of what I do, but not all of what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, would you advise uh, people to have like a stock investing as like a, a full time job or do you feel like it's too risky? Well, uh, as far as people that are trading individual stocks, I don't even think that the professionals that have been doing this for 20 or 30 years have the ability to outperform the market consistently over the long term. So I would say no, absolutely not. Do not trade stocks full time. However, uh, most people should have a passive investment philosophy so they don't have to pay attention to the market. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a difference between like uh, the stock market in Turkey, in a country like Turkey and the United States? Uh, yes, I would say that there is. I'm not as familiar with the stock market in Turkey, but the U.S. and other developed countries around the world have very strict regulations that uh, the governments have put in place to protect both the, the companies that are being traded along with the investors that are trading um, that are trading the stock. So, so the governments provide protection. Um, the stock market of the U.S. represents over 50% of the global stock market value. Uh, the stock market, the total value of the stock market in Turkey represents less than 5% of the global stock market value. So in that regard, they are quite different in terms of value. Uh, I can't speak to the uh, regulation of Turkey, though. Mm -hmm. Uh uh, what is uh, what would be your theory on uh, stock picking? Uh, if it's for fun, sure. If you want to go to a movie and spend your money on entertainment, I look at stock picking as entertainment. Um, I don't think that it's viable in the long term. I think that again, buying uh, an investment that holds most of the world's stocks is a much better tactic mm -hmm. oh uh, also i had a question for you mr uh mr lynch so what should you consider before investing in stocks you know we have a lot of beginners like investors that they might face a lot of troubles while they, they might not like look at it as a full-time job as you said they might look at a hobby or therefore they can they're gonna like lose a lot of money and they're just going to like leave the job. I mean, not kind of job. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, stock picking in, in, we have many clients that contact us and say, I think I want to buy this company or I want to buy this area of the stock market. I want to invest in this company. And what I ask them or tell them is the professional stock pickers, companies, the, the people that do this for a living, are reading every quarterly financial document that is filed by the company to the regulators. So quarterly here in the U.S., companies have to file documents every quarter. That tells a lot about what the company's challenges are what their future challenges and, and future strengths and weaknesses are. So also every quarter, the company's senior management generally hold a conference call with different analysts all over the world to explain where the, how their company is doing. Um, plus the professional stock picking companies have lots of software and people to read, review, and talk to senior management about the company. So all of these professionals are working to try to figure out, should we invest in that company? Therefore, my opinion is the average person who's trying to invest, they don't know anything about that. And even if they did, meaning the, the quarterly conference calls and et cetera, 
they're not going to be able to outperform any of the professionals because the professionals have a poor record anyway of, of doing well. So my opinion is that uh, the little guy is, is investing, the individual is investing based on what their, their gut tells them and their heart, but not their head because nobody knows what's going to, going to happen. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I was going to ask, what are some common mistakes uh, beginners make and should avoid? Yeah, uh, I think taking on too much risk, um, not realizing investing should be for the long term, decades, not years, not months, not weeks, not days. A day trader back in, in the late 90s and 2000, people here in the U.S. literally would quit their job as a plumber or uh, a bookkeeper or I don't think too many teachers. I think they knew better. But other professions literally would quit their job to day trade. And that blew up in March of 2000, day trading. So um, for, for a new person, I think not understanding the risk and not realizing investing is a long-term process over decades. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be it for the interview. Thank you for your time and uh, have a nice day. It was my pleasure. Good luck, Ali, Arian, and Valerie. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Email me if you need anything else. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, thank okay, you bye -bye. so much. Bye. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So now I would uh, I would start with like Miss Richards and then I'll lastly I would interview Arian. So do you have any past experience about stock uh, with uh, stock investing? No, I don't. Um, I recently started down this path working with Mr. Lynch uh, one year ago. Um, and it really came down to um, a time to start planning for my retirement. And so um, I happened to go to um, hear a speaker that spoke about um, teachers and what you would need to do to start stock investing to save for retirement. So that's where I started to get interested in it because I started to realize that maybe this is something I had not really thought enough about and needed to help have some help planning. I got referred to Mr. Lynch's company at this at this um, speaker's event, um, who said that Plan Vision was a good company to work with. They understood teachers. They understood our mindset, and um, so this was really our uh, my first time really thinking about it and and. Um, I really did not know anything about any of the terminology, how to choose things, how to get started. So Mr. Lynch has really helped me with that. Mm -hmm. uh, have you uh, like gone to stock investing and what was, uh, and if yes, what was your experience with it? Um, what it is been uh, over the last year is just really getting started in a small way um and um the way that plan vision um mr lynch's um the company mr lynch works for they they help you analyze what kind of risk you want to take now i'm doing um probably i'm doing combination between bonds and stocks right now and so um but what that takes place through is that there's um, a company they work with that manages the stocks and then another one that manages the um, the bond trading. And mm -hmm. um, I'm probably doing probably a 60-40 divide between more with bonds and then, uh, then, with, uh, then with stocks about 40%. But right now I'm sort of in the beginning of getting that um, uh, working. My husband, Mr. Kirk, has a couple of ways that he's looking at stocks and he uses eToro 
and um, there's also a company in the UK that he uses in order to, uh, to invest in stocks. So I kind of watch what's going on with what his choices are as well, you know, to be able to figure out what I'm interested in doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to ask you another question, Ms. Richards. Yeah. So most people, uh, as I wrote in my document, look at stock investing as a full career job, right? And yes. Some people look for, as it for like a like saving for retirement. Mm -hmm. Mr. Then said there are a lot of like clients or customers where they look at it as a as it like save for retirement. What do you think? Is it like considered to be a full time career job or like a uh -huh. hot, let's say and uh, and like entertainment like every other? Uh, I I think it depends on who you are. Um, if it's something that. Um, fits into an, a, a specific need of yours, whether that's entertainment or in my case, looking at um, a retirement fund, you know, then I don't see that as being something that would be full-time. A full-time job, you know, you could have that. I, I, you know, this certainly is something that you hear about, you know, in the States, for example, you know, people being full-time stock, stock traders. Um, I think it's something that if you're interested in doing, that's fine. But I think it's, I think it's um, perhaps maybe it would be good to talk to people that actually have done that job. And, and I can imagine it, it has a certain degree of stress to it, you know, and demand on your time and your, your focus. So, you know, in my case, I, I meet with Mr. Lynch maybe once a month we kind of go over what I've done, you know, what I've invested at that point. And then, you know, uh, he helps me with, um, you know, going through the, the steps of investing the money into the different, different places that we've chosen. So, um, you know, I think to be a, a full-time stock investor that, that it, it takes time and experience to really be able to feel like you're, it's something you can do full time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was. Uh, yeah, that you can continue. Uh, I was gonna also ask. Uh, no, Arian, you can uh, go if you want. You can ask any questions. If you got any other. No, no, no. You can go. You can go. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also gonna ask the same question, uh, but since Arian already asked it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it, I guess. Uh, thank you for your time and have a good sure. day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. And any questions you forgot to ask tonight, we can also discuss at school. Okay. Just, let you know, okay. Mm -hmm. you All right. Much. Thank you. Take thank care, you, so you guys. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye, Bye. Okay. I, I apologize. Uh, error occurred in my camera and it's not working. Was well, so continue on. I'll go on with the interview. Okay, uh, what made you pick stock investing for your project? So there was this ongoing thing with my friends as uh, where they talked about stock investing a lot. Not only stock investing, but also cryptocurrency. I know they're really similar, but let's not uh, ignore the fact that they both uh, relate to different things. So yeah, so I got in interested where my mom started teaching stock investing to her students, as well as my aunts. And I, I have, I have, I have had a, a friend since third grade where he, he profited a lot of money from his stock. And I was really curious to find out how he did it so I can invest my own money. And yeah, that's how I got interested in the topic. And then I started researching and I had, I talked with my mom about it because she you knows she's a professional investor. So yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how? Uh, okay. My second question would be: How did you? Uh, how did your stock investing go? And do you feel like it went good for you, or do you feel like you could have done better? You know, stock investing has a lot of ups and downs. So I wouldn't say there's. So listen, stock investing is it's basically like gambling right but it's a professional way it's like appropriate way it's as looking at looking at it as like a perspective a job perspective so there's also the, uh so it is possible for you to lose your money 
But I said being a stock investor is really hard because you have to be patient and you shouldn't let your emotions control yourself. So yeah, I've lost a tons of money and I profited where if we compare them both, I've basically profited a little bit. So yeah. Okay. What was the reason that you lost some of your money and what mistakes uh, have you made? So basically the basic, uh, the most uh, simple mistake I made was choosing the wrong stock. And so the, we, but you know, you can buy a share of a stock and you should put a specific amount of money, a specific amount of value in it. And I basically chose, I put a lot of money in a stock that I didn't really care about. I said, I didn't research about it and, and it just, yeah after a week or so and as mr lynch said you have to look at it for it's not a job that should be for years it's for decades and i didn't really it wasn't really educated guess and i bought a stock for a lot amount of money and i lost mm -hmm. uh what stocks did you pick and why did you pick them i don't really get this question uh, what stocks uh, did you pick and why did you pick these stocks? So, because uh, I've invested in Iranian stocks, uh, you know, they have different names. First thing that I should, uh, it's like a reminder, you notice that uh, you shouldn't really look at, uh, let's say, uh, popular stocks, like for Tesla, for example, or McDonald's, anything. It can be Apple. So people might probably get tricked by this however you should look at stocks that have been that have had a great value over time and by using your knowledge and understanding you can assume that this stock is going to be is going to be at a higher like a higher value therefore you purchase that value so a, 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 a stock that i bought in iran was named iran Kodro, which i don't really it's like a uh a a car company in Iran and I've actually made a lot of money but also I I profited and also I lost a, a lot of money mm -hmm. okay that will be it for the interview thank you for your time and uh, have a nice day I guess no problem okay bye okay <sighs> As a conclusion, uh, sorry for the background, I couldn't get anything better. I just got like the stock investing application open behind me. And I actually wanted to record this segment of the documentary in Istanbul uh, Stock Exchange. It's a financial institution. I don't know anything about financial institutions or I wasn't going to explain anything about it. But I thought it might be uh, cool to go to that area and record over there. But after uh, after we contacted it, uh, we contacted them. Uh, they didn't accept that we just uh, come to their institution just to record uh, a documentary for a project. But anyways, stock market uh, can be difficult and. I don't think uh, after all the research, I don't really think that it should be a full-time job, but you can have, you can do stock investing as a side hustle and then do other things. It's always less risky to do more than one thing at, uh, like at once because you have more chance of success. For example, me, I do, I do boxing and I, I want to do boxing when I grow up, but it's too risky. I'm also going to, let's say work in a, a clothing business or like stock market and stuff on the side the, your main focus shouldn't be your only focus and just like uh, to explain something uh, what's it called uh, in the beginning of the video where I uh, I bought stocks and stuff this was all a demo it wasn't really like uh, me buying stocks and uh, or like working with company shares and actually making money off of it because when I got contacted by the stock exchange company and they're like in Turkish law 
you have to at least start with a minimum of 50,000 TL of budget but I didn't really have that much budget so I used the demo where it's the exact same as the real one other than the fact that you're not actually buying a company shares or making any profit off of it and lastly uh, don't think stock market would easily make you rich because stock market is a really complicated and uh, it's, uh, it's really complicated and it's all like luck and all but if you learn about it and you want to like be rich or like make it rich off of it that wouldn't take you uh, a short period of time or let's say a year or so it might take you 10 15 years to make a lot of profit off of it that's why my goal of fifty thousand dollars wasn't really realistic and wasn't a smart uh, choice and yeah that would be it that's a wrap up for uh, the documentary the thing closed okay it's about gone that's a wrap up for the documentary thank you for watching it and i uh, hope you learned something uh off of it about stock market yeah I know this is not related to my stock investing journey or anything, but I thought it might be cool to show this. Uh, so you see, I bought Tesla stocks worth of $100,000 in the demo version of the app. And right now, by this second, it's making me $10,000 profit, 11000 So you see, Tesla stocks are constantly going down. Let me show you the full timeline. They're constantly going down in value, but that does not have to do with anything. You can buy stocks that are constantly going up in value. You buy them at their peak and they might just go down and lose you a lot of money. Uh, it's all about when you buy the stocks and when you sell them and that would make you the profit. And yeah, that's it.